Hi, welcome to our community. I'm Susie Thomas visiting with Mark Rice, who is the still fairly new store manager of Lifeway Christian Stores. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, let's start with the change. Um, so many of our listeners and uh, so many of us have enjoyed Berea Berean mm -hmm. Christian bookstores for mm -hmm. so long. And uh, recently, about a year or so ago, went through a transition. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's been a little over two years now. Wow, longer yeah, than I realized. It, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been with um, the Canton store for about a year and a half. Um, but uh, back in uh, 2014, um, I believe that was the year, um, Berean was um, going to be closing their stores all 17 of them. And so um, Lifeway had the opportunity to come into each of those communities and be able to continue the ministry that Berean had, had done mm -hmm. for so many years, 30 plus years yeah. um, that they had been in business. And so at least in that, posi in, in that uh, location. So um, we were able to come in and um, try to keep things um, going as a Christian bookstore here in, in town because we didn't have a lot to, to of Christian um, bookstores in the area, so it was it was good for Lifeway, and it was and it was good for the community. I think to to be um, the, the transition was good. And what a loss that would have been. Yeah. Um, so, but this was not your first time coming in and helping bringing Lifeway to a place where they were about to lose their Christian store. Right. The same thing happened back in Columbus um, when I was uh, working for the Christian Army Bookstore, and and in 2002 it had been 32 years for our store, and our owners um, they were in their 70s. They wanted to retire, and understandably so, and um, they were going to close their doors. Um, but Lifeway. Um, um, is, has been around for 91 years. Hmm. Um, they are a nonprofit organization, um, and they are a division of the um, Southern Baptist Convention. Um, they raise money for missions. That's really what the the bottom line is. Um, we want to minister to the community that we're in, but we also are raising money to to pay for missions um, in North America and around the world. That is so cool. So, yeah. so, so part of whenever you shop at Lifeway, part of your purchase is going to support missions. Yeah, all of our bottom line goes to support missions through the North American Mission Board. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Now, does that make a difference in the kinds of products we're going to see there? Um, we try to concentrate on the things that we all agree on as an evangelical church. Um, our, our mission is to see lives transformed mm -hmm. through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we try to carry products that, um, that we all agree on, um, that we are able to, um, to live out that mission. Mm -hmm. Take us on a tour through Lifeway. We walk through the doors, and a lot of things are the same, but there might be a few changes. Yeah. Um, we actually did a reset about a year and maybe a year and a half ago, a little bit less than that, I guess, um, where we um, moved all of our, our mainline books to the front half of the store. Our Bible studies are all in the back half of the store, and right in between, uh, if you've been in our store, right in the center of it, is our Bible department. Mm -hmm. That stayed the same. Um, um, and then we have music and along the left side of the store. We have a cafe there where it's just free coffee, um, th places for people to sit and relax and, and browse through books and things. Um, we also have seating areas throughout the store for people to sit down. Um, but our, our kids' area stayed the same. We have a whole big room in the back um, for all of our children's products. And we still have a ministry room in the back right corner um, where um, we have the things that churches are, are looking for. Um, and um, and that has remained the same as well. Um, our gift department is all down the right-hand side of the store for cards and, and gift product. All really nice kinds of things that you can find there. And do you still have the engraving? Does P. Graham Dunn still come in and engrave? Well, actually, we own that machine. So oh. we, yeah, we have that engraving um, equipment. Um, myself and Jane, um, we are able to do um, pens and plaques mm -hmm. and, and those kinds of things. Um, uh, right there while you wait, depending on how much you're having us um, having us engrave or having us type into the program. Um, but uh, yeah, we do have that there at the store, and we just got in a whole new line of, of new products that we can um, personalize for That's you. It's so nice, and that just is such a nice little extra touch. Yeah. Um, all right, well, how much fun do you have uh, seeing the children come in? And you really have created that atmosphere of a bookstore 
um, kind of the library slash bookstore feeling mm-hmm. with the with the seating and so forth. You can kind of try before you buy a little bit. And, yeah. But yeah. Uh, the the children, how important is it that children begin to love the Bible so early in life? Well, I have five kids of my own. Wow. And I've had the opportunity to um, to lead them all to Christ um, and be a part of that um, with each one of them, and that is such a blessing. Um, I really think that um, instilling first um, – in their in their first formative years, instilling um, even the simple Bible stories, getting them interested in the stories of Jesus, the Old Testament stories, and just um, uh, being able to um, to um, share that with the next generation, mm-hmm. I think is so important. Um, that's one of the reasons that we do our story time on uh, Friday mornings now mm-hmm. at 1030. Um, they do that at the Copley store as well um, at the same time, 1030, every um, Friday morning. And we've been having uh, several repeat children coming back e- each week, and, and we do a little snack with them. And, and we just want them to feel comfortable yeah. in a bookstore. Um, uh, uh, my wife and I, um, we homeschool. and. Uh, I think it was my wife who actually instilled the reading bug in all of my kids um, because she read to them so much as they were growing up, and that just makes a big difference. What does story time look like, and has has that Bible app dug into your business at all? Because I know kids just love going on the phone and having Bible stories read to them all the time. Right. We have a Bible at the store where it has an app that through B&H Kids that you can actually click on an icon and it comes to life. And it uh, um, creates a, a little movie mm-hmm. for the kids to uh, interact with it. So we've got some of that kind of thing going on. It has not really changed the fact that parents love to sit down and their children love to be read to. Um, that That's not changed. Um, people like a real book to sit down and, and go through with their kids as well. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, it, our story time, you were asking how, what it looked like. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do typically is we'll read a story to the kids. They usually are preschool age children, um, and so their attention span's a little shorter. So we read a story with them, and then while we're reading, we give them little coloring pages and things like that to, to work on, and then um, we have a little break where they, we have games for them to play, little tossing games and things like that for them to play. They come back, they get a little snack, before we start the next story. We usually do two stories, um, and we try to keep all of that um, cohesive to where the the activity pages and the story go together. And, and this so. is a free time families can bring in, parents and grandparents can bring in the children. Fridays, every Friday? Every Friday at 10.30. At what time? 10.30. Yeah. How fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my goodness. And then they get to browse, of course. Yeah. Um, Just as we were talking about the apps and so forth, that just reminds me, bookstores kind of have changed, right? Because the technology, I'm thinking even of pastors who Mm -hmm. are going to want certain apps and so forth, Mm -hmm. um, you're really having to provide those kinds of things as well. Yeah, and we do that through Lifeway.com, most of those things. And there is a Lifeway store app. Um, Whereas if if you go on your phone and put the app on your phone, you actually right now you can get a 40% coupon for doing that. Nice. Um, And what that allows you to do from your home is be able to... um, uh, be able to look up a product that and see if the, our store has it, and it's within 24 hours. So, so sometimes the the inventory might be off one or mm-hmm, two, but mm-hmm. typically it's pretty close. Um, and so they um, people have been able to look up on our app, see that we have a product in the store, and then contact us or swing by and pick up that product um, right off the shelf. Uh, Easter is going to be early this year, right yep. around the corner. We want to drive people your way. What's hot right now? What should we put in children's Easter baskets, or what do our pastor loved ones need and want to find in theirs? Well, there's a um, the case for Easter is always a good um, good um, uh, uh, outreach kind of mm-hmm. tool from Lee Strobel. Um, that is going to be on special. I do know coming up um, here in the. In our next catalog, our Easter catalog will be hitting um, right after Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's actually in place right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And so um, we've got that. We have several um, different Easter tracks and things that that people like to use. I would say um, for children, um, any of the VeggieTale, the the VeggieTale Easter um, is is <laughs> going to be on special is on special actually right now. Yeah. Um, the resurrection eggs. I love the resurrection eggs. Yes. Um, just how they um, pull together the like an Easter egg hunt with 
with what the real meaning of Easter is. So those are some things for children. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks for the shopping help, for (laughs) one thing. That's important. Um, Story time is one of the ways you engage the community. You've got a number of things coming up. You want to go ahead and tell us what a few of those are? Um, I think our next big thing is going to be on March 5th. It's um, It's a Vacation Bible School Discovery Day. And we will have sessions um, for the VBS leaders and and their volunteers. Um, it is a free event, um, and they can come and they can see all of the Vacation Bible Schools that we have to offer. There are 13 of them this year um, from different companies, 13 different um, uh, themes um, that they can choose from. Um, we will be going over uh, four of them uh, pretty, um, pretty substantially in those sessions. There's a 10 o'clock session, a 1 o'clock session, and a four o'clock session and those um, last about an hour and a half um, or so and we will actually be presenting the different vacation Bible schools that each of the companies are offering this year um, to hopefully help people make a wise choice for their church. I don't think there's any of them that would be a bad choice. It just depends on what their church is looking for. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with Mark Rice. He's manager of Lifeway Christian Stores in Canton, Ohio on 30th Street there. Vacation Bible School has become a huge production, mm-hmm. hasn't it? Yes. I think of it when I, you know, when I was a kid, we would go, we would do a craft, we'd have a story, we'd have a snack, mm-hmm. we'd go home, that was it. Mm-hmm. But now you have these incredible come visit Jerusalem back in the yeah. day. And, yep. you know, and also I'm seeing dads becoming more involved. This used to be mm-hmm. a mom's thing completely. Yeah. But more and more fathers and more and more evening Bible schools yes. because you have two working parents. Yes. So let's, uh, oh gosh, and before our break, tell <laughs> us a little bit, what are some of these? Can you give us a sneak preview mm-hmm. before Discover Day about what some of these might look like and what's, what churches will have to choose from? Well, uh, the, the Lifeway Vacation Bible School is a full vacation Bible school from babies all the way through adults, and it's called Submerged this year. And it is um, it is talking about being submerged in, in Christ mm-hmm. and submerged in His Word, and each day... Um, they will have an activity card that, that goes along with, with the, um, the lesson, but there's also um, crafts and, and all of the, the um, food items and everything is, is around the theme of that day. Um, and basically, it's a site-based um, Vacation Bible School allows you to have fewer volunteers because you can have one teacher teach the lesson Mm -hmm. um, to all of the different groups. And then you separate the groups and have crew leaders go around from um, site to site. It is a lot easier. Um, You mentioned. Except for that one teacher. Well, that one teacher has to do it. Yeah, they have to do it several times. God bless that person. But it is much easier than um, trying to get 10 teachers that can tell the story and can, can contact concentrate on that one thing. Has that become a thing, getting yeah. more and more people to volunteer for it? Um, well, it, it it is easier to be a volunteer in Vacation Bible School now because of the site-based yes. um, um, direction that uh, many of the companies have gone this year. Um, and not just this year, but the last several years, it keeps going that direction. Um, but um, it has been a... Um, Something that I used when I was directing Vacation Bible School as well, when you are limited on your volunteers, to have people focus on what it is and then take the kids around. And we use our youth to help us move move the kids from place to place so that they aren't the teachers. The teachers are stationary. And so that's been a a real plus. Um, And Submerged is just really a fun underwater kind of um, theme. And it's just uh, going deep in Jesus. Very cool. Any swimming involved in this? vacation Bible. There could be. It depends on <laughs> you your facilities. Yeah. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be back with Mark Rice. Uh, you're listening to our community. Awesome. Okay. That's and we really probably, interesting. probably, once you get rid of all of my stammering, then yeah. you might be able to, it'll fit in the time uh, I think it'll be right at 14, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to okay. go ahead and just do 13 and a half, and we'll, we'll take that out. Yeah, no worries. Okay. We'll just go straight into the... It's It's... Big Bible something, and I didn't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, I couldn't right. remember what it was. That's all right. Better just to to go into and talk more in generalities, yeah. and yeah, yeah, that's fine. So okay, great job, honestly. So okay. on these last, um, I I'm three. amazed that there's a Bible school discovery day where where you choose your whole themes and everything because mm-hmm. that is we've so, been doing that for several years. That's really great. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, last year we had 106 
um, people show up for it. So cool. All yeah. right. And well, let's let's come back and remind them the date and time of okay. that again. So, okay. Because there were three times. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ready for more? I guess so. Okay. All right. You're doing great. In three, two... Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas with Mark Rice. He's the manager of Lifeway Christian Stores. Um, Bible School Discovery Day coming up March 5th. So all of you who are involved with Bible School, they've done the work. The work, it's all put together for you. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, remind us the times that we can go and find out and you get yes. to choose which theme works best for your yep. church. Yep. Um, 10 o'clock on March 5th mm -hmm. is the first session and then 1 o'clock and then 4 o'clock. Um, all on that same day. And then if your church can't come for one of those sessions, then um, we can set up appointments um, any time of the day during our normal business hours, and we can set aside a part of our room and, and, and go through all of the um, Vacation Bible School options there for you as well. So so that's uh, all a, um, uh, a positive thing to do it all on the one day, um, but we know that schedules may prohibit that. So, so we have al allotted um, sure. uh, different people. We have three of us who are um, the Vacation Bible School experts this year, and we're going to um, do our best to to show you what it is that uh, that is out there, so you can make a wise choice. Now, there are four you're going to be showing. Remind us how many you actually are carrying. There are thirteen different themes. Wow. Now okay. several of them are from one company may have mm -hmm. multiple themes and so so but there are 13 themes this year. Well God bless the people who originally do those and publish those yes. and really help churches out yeah. because yeah as a long time Bible school yeah. volunteer yeah. that can be let's just get it out there one big <laughs> headache. Uh -huh. So yeah, that is awesome, and, well, and how I, great for the kids. I do want to mention too. You can call the store um, at three three zero four nine two seven nine nine zero to sign up for a time, and it is a free event. So um, so you can call and just sign up, um, and for whichever time works best for you. Awesome. Again, a free event. Okay, you've got a couple of book signings coming up and some authors coming in. Tell All us right, about we those. We do. Um, Beverly Lewis. Um, she is going to be um, in the store on April 8th at 7 p.m. That's a Friday night. Um, and we'll be do doing a book signing for her new um, book, Atonement, that's coming out. And she does a lot of the Amish-themed mm -hmm. um, fiction. Yes, And so people very are very popular. familiar with her. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, Beverly Lewis, and that's April 8th. What time is she going to be um, there? 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Great. And then uh, Tony Evans's daughter, Priscilla yeah. Shire, is coming. Tell us about that. Well, actually, we're doing a simulcast. She's going to be doing go. a, a national simulcast. Mm -hmm. And we did this last year, and we had about 56 women show up. And mm -hmm. we have a conference room at the Canton store. And we're able to um, actually show the simulcast up on the wall. Um, and um, it's a time of worship with her brother. Um, uh, hmm. Her brother. Anthony. Anthony <laughs> Evans. It took me a second because I was thinking Tony, and I know that he's not her brother. <laughs> um, and Anthony Evans will be doing all of the um, praise and worship time at the beginning. Yeah. And it was just so cool to see the ladies come together. They were all standing. They were singing. They were raising their hands and just praising the Lord right there in the middle of the store. Wow. In our, we have a in our conference room. Yes. And um, so we're going to be doing that again. It is another free event. Um, and you can call that same number, 330-492-7990, to sign up um, to come to that. And you can bring as many of the women um, in your church um, group that you'd like to bring. And it's just a great time. She is an excellent speaker. Mm -hmm. She, um, Many people will remember her. She was the lead character in War Room. Oh, that, That's Priscilla. Yes. That is her. Oh, yeah. my. Okay. And that, again, is April 23rd. What time? Um, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And, and it goes all day. Okay. Uh, I believe that it ends at 435, if I'm not mistaken. What a nice, cozy atmosphere to be yeah. doing a simulcast. So yeah. grab your church friends and, and get to that. Totally yeah. free event. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, Mark, you've mentioned so many of these different free events. However, you are running a store. We are. <laughs> so I, I'm curious as to the heart of Lifeway and how important it appears that this business is involved in the community. Can you talk right. about that a little bit? Right. Um, we feel like, you know, we're raising money for missions and to help support missionaries around the world. But our mission field, my mission field, is right here in Canton. Um, and we want to be that central place 
for churches to feel um, comfortable to come and to be able to pastors to come and just sit down and browse, um, come in and get a cup of coffee, feel comfortable that way. But we also do outreaches um, where we um, we provide Bibles um, for prisons. We provide Bibles mm-hmm. for uh, mission events that, that people are working with um, through our customers a lot of times because we will put that that need out there. And it's been amazing to see our customers and how they are um, just wanting to participate somehow. And maybe or maybe not, they, they just they may or may not have a way to do that, and we are providing some way for them to participate as well. Um, so we have we have outreach events almost at least twice a quarter yeah, um, to yeah. try to to um, to at least uh, minister to people in our community um, and try to be a part of of what's going on in Canton. Mm-hmm. So each store we have 175 stores. Each store takes on their community, um, and our goal is to bring churches together. Um, on common ground, someplace safe, and then also to reach out to our community and and help um, serve the, those who are in need around us. And and that is um, just so admirable as far as the the purpose, your mission really is to raise money for missions. Mm-hmm. That that is um, no one's making their fortune through no, this, but no. to be able to use the funds and uh, be such good stewards of the funds that mm-hmm. people spend on these Christian materials, whether it be Bible school materials or fun books for kids or pastor's materials or just really good devotionals and your basic reading material, mm-hmm. music, gifts, so forth, yeah. all going towards missions. It is. Um, can you dig a little deeper and tell us what types of missions, what's happening with this money once it gets dispersed to these people in need? Well, it goes through, um, the Southern Baptist Convention has a a good um, uh, administrative um, piece that is already um, being taken care of through the Southern Baptist churches. Mm -hmm. And so there is no administrative costs um, when when money comes through our fingers. um, After we've paid our bills, all of that profit becomes uh, goes to the North American Mission, Mission Board as a part of our contributions um, toward um, toward the missionaries um, here in North America. We also work with the IMB, which is the International Mission Board, and so monies are then um, sent to them through um, percentages um, uh, through the money that that we are are uh, raising through the store as well. Mm-hmm. So are did they, that answer your question? It did. Are okay. they supporting people? They're supporting mm-hmm. missionaries or supporting projects? Or um, both. And both. Mm-hmm. Both. There are mission projects that are done through Lifeway, um, where w- actually our employees are able to participate in those mission projects, um, and then there are also missionaries on the ground um, as a na- national or an international disaster kind of. Uh, relief um, uh, fund is needed. Then we have those um, coin boxes at the registers where we're collecting, yeah. and that 100% of that, every penny of that, goes directly to the missionaries who are already have feet on the ground there at that, um, in that location, wherever that, you know, when there was a tsunami or when the, mm-hmm. it, um, you know, um, the hurricanes and different things like that. And so we will collect for a certain amount of time um, for um, different different uh, disasters to help with that as well. Let's talk about your employees a little bit, about mm-hmm. uh, the the type of atmosphere, always so friendly, always so helpful. Um, I'm sure you want to give a shout out to them, <laughs> but then talk yeah. about the quality of people that you have working for you. Right. Uh, many of the people have been doing this for years and years, and they've been with Berean, and then they stayed on with Lifeway because they just really have a heart for the, the business. They have a heart for the community, um, and um, they have um, just had to learn a different um, uh, way of, of ordering or different, you know, just different processes. Mm-hmm. But it's basically the same job that they had prior um, to uh, to Lifeway coming um, uh, coming to Canton, um, and so they have been troopers. They have they have <laughs> really done well through their transition. Um, many of them, uh, I think the the longest um, has been twenty four years. Wow. Um, yeah, and and they have just been doing a great job. Um, I came in to a great staff. I didn't have to do anything with that at all, um, and it's been a really positive 
experience because their their heart is to uh, minister to the people that walk in the door um, and to be able to do that well. And so um, so they have just been doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Great job. Change can be difficult for people, mm -hmm. but when they when the goal, when the mission is mm -hmm. so similar, yeah, uh, it's not that much of a change, really. Pretty much a name change. Right, right. Yep. Yeah, so good. All right, well, we have not finished talking about all the things that you're doing for the community. Uh, you've got a choral music celebration coming up in the summer. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yes, um, that is actually something that Berean Stores used to sponsor several years ago. It hasn't been going on for the last couple years. Um, and when I got here, one of the things I noticed was I was doing more choral orders than I had done in the 27 years I've been doing this. I did more in that one year than I had done um, in all the time that I've been doing this. So um, I thought there really is a need for um, our choir directors to have a place that they can get their music, um, have a person that they can connect to, and be able to um, uh, to continue um, their ministries. Um, and one of the things that they had done was this choral music celebration, CMC. Mm -hmm. um, and they had done it down at the Nazarene Church, and we're going to do that same thing um, uh, on 30th Street, the Nazarene Church there, Canton First Church, um, is going to... Um, to um, be the location. Um, we have um, vendors. All of the different um, companies that are going to be represented um, are Lifeway and Praise Gathering, Brentwood Benson, mm -hmm. um, Word, Lilinus, Lorenz, um, all of the traditional ones, um, Hope and Shawnee. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have reading sessions um, for, those, um, for those choral directors to come in and preview music um, and get some uh, some firsthand information, even from some of the people who wrote some of the music, Jay Rouse, Randy Vader. They'll be several, there. They'll be there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and so we'll be doing readings um, uh, for different musicals and things that will be coming up for the f fall and Christmas of next year, um, along with um, some traditional. Um, uh, just sacred music mm -hmm. um, that we'll be doing. We have a big um, uh, Friday night concert where um, Praise Gathering um, will be um, uh, coming and doing a, um, it's called a preview of their, uh, a premiere, I'm sorry, a premiere of their um, uh, Christmas, one of their Christmas musicals, and they'll be uh, commissioning a local choir to come in and 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 put on that musical so, so they'll get to hear a live kind of christmas in july you're getting yeah. to see it performed right and then kind of pick what works with your congregation the, the your mm -hmm. own choir are you seeing more choirs in churches again or um I, we've gone through a time of worship teams what are you seeing is there i'm a trend? seeing um i'm seeing a lot of worship teams but I, there is a place for the choir that um that uh has not gone away um it's a place where the soloists um, maybe the the non soloists, I guess mm -hmm. the the choir the singers. Land. They want to be a part. They want to worship, and um, a choir gives them that place. It gives them that um, place to be a part of the worship team, mm -hmm. um, even if they don't feel comfortable stepping out and singing a solo themselves. You know, and and there is something about voices joined together in praise for the Lord that that the Lord inhabits that, and mm -hmm. it's just it's something that we don't want to let go of in our churches. And so that's one of the reasons that we were bringing this back as well, um, is we want to encourage those choir directors to keep at it. Th this is a good thing. And, and, um, and yes, it's it, the, the praise team um, kind of um, uh, platform ha has kind of come into, um, come into the churches a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing either. Oh, no. Because, but I think there's room for both. And mm -hmm. so I just, mm -hmm. um, I just really in, am encouraging um, Choir directors to to keep up the fight and don't don't go re weary in doing good mm -hmm. because there is good there um, in in what they're doing. I grew up singing in choir. That's how I learned to read music. It's I was a music major first, um, and so I have led church choirs and and just have continued to to really push for the choir to to stay active. Very in well said. Uh, that is July 22nd and 23rd at First Nazarene Church in Canton, Ohio. Real quick, give us your website. Okay, yeah. If you go on to lifeway.com um, forward slash CMC, that's where you're going to find the information there. And then if, you, if there are any questions, you can um, give us a call at the store. At 330-492-7990. Mark Rice, thanks so much for joining us, and thank you for being with us today on Our Community.
We went a little over, but no one is going to be minding that because that was so good and okay. so important okay. to say. So, okay. so good. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. No problem. Really I good. can talk a lot about a lot of stuff, but yeah, it just made me it. so nervous. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this thing right here. No. Uh, but you didn't sound nervous at all. It was okay, really good. good. And, um, yeah, well, we'll need to have you back for sure because some of these things are coming. Like, come back in the summer. Let's talk about the choral music celebration yeah. again. Yeah. I meant so, to yeah. mention that Travis Cottrell is going to be Ooh. the – do you know who he is? I've heard that name. Yeah, he is the guest soloist for that night. He's doing a concert uh -huh. along with the the premiere that night, and I should have mentioned that. Well, you know what? I mean, that's not until July. Yeah. So you can come back. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that again. Okay. So really good. Good, good stuff. All right. Let me see if um, she made your thing yet. And if not, I don't see it yet. So give me your email address. It's mark.rice, R-E-I-S-S, at lifeboy.com. .com. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> good job. Thanks for having me. I hope it was not too painful. <laughs> it made me nervous, but I'm okay. I'll, I survived it. Yeah, you did great. Yeah, I was telling my staff this morning in our meeting that I had to do this, and, there, and I said, I've been talking for a half hour. <laughs> and I was like, hyperventilating. You and I said, you know what? Way? Yeah, it did go quickly. Yeah. Um, and I, I said, the only time I've ever been on the radio is with a friend of mine in college who was a communications ma major, and he was wild. Uh, it was a Christian, it was Mount Vernon Nazarene. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was, he was just crazy. And so I was like his out on the street kind of reporter thing, yeah, and it was yeah. just silly. We were yeah. just being, I'm surprised yeah, yeah. they allowed us to put it on. That's so funny. It was just dumb. That <laughs> so. sounds like my boys when they were in college, they used yeah. to do all those kinds of things yeah. too. Well, thank you okay. again so right. much. Thank yeah. You. No, this, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I didn't turn it off. It's still recording. No, she'll come in and get that. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Really? That's so Just cool. This, yeah, see this thing over on the right? Our engineer put that in. Oh. And that helps to bring the voice up. And, and